Okay. Okay. Um, um, are we all here? I'm here. Okay, cool. So let's start. I guess we can all see where we are. So I know that uh, Andy, Gabby, and Mr. Walters are in New York, but where are you going to see? Okay, I guess we should go to the beginning of our presentation. Okay. So hi, I'm Anna Sophia Costa from Marymount School, New York. I'm president of the Student Technology Leadership Team, and I'm going to Tufts University next year. I'm Anna Saudu. I'm a genius junior at Marymount, uh, and I am one of the co-coordinators of the Student Technology and Leadership Conference at the club. A student technology leadership team, and I will be co the conference next year. Hi, I'm Gabby Polinas, and I'm also a junior. I also co-coordinated the Student Technology Leadership Conference, and I will also be coordinating the conference next year. So as you so mentioned, mentioned, we're all students, students at, at Marymount School, School of New York, which is which the nursery, nursery K-12 independent, independent school. school. You're also you're an also an Apple distinguished, distinguished School, which means that the school provides technological assistance for all the students and teachers 24-7. Likewise, all the students have, students have iPads, and the upper school students are all given MacBook Airs. I'm president, I'm president of our student technology, technology leadership team, which was founded in 2011. We've done various projects throughout the years, and, and one of our current projects that we have is our Snapchat. So we update students, students throughout the day and different things that are happening and different reminders. Likewise, the student technology leadership team has put together the student technology conference, which is the focus of our presentation today. So. If we go back to December of 2013, uh, the students decided that um, as a growing and new uh, student technology leadership team that they wanted to partner with schools uh, from across the country to uh, form a network of student technology teams. And in December of 2013, they formed a rather loose cohort of schools uh, from as far away as uh, California, we had a school in Minnesota. Uh, we had some other schools that expressed an interest, but if we were going to be honest, we didn't really have a good sense of what we wanted this network to be. Um, and because we didn't have a goal and objective in mind, uh, other than just coordinating with uh, other schools, uh, it sort of got a little uh, ratty at the end, and we had several schools said that they weren't interested. So we decided to uh, we, as we do at Marymount, we pressed onward. So the question that sort of came up with some of our, uh, we had about three or four schools that were left in our little cohort, was what if we planned a virtual uh, meeting with our network of schools? And the idea for that would be to share projects. It would be to share ideas. It would be to share um, the work that we were doing in our individual schools. So we envisioned this as a, sort of small-scale meeting by Skype among three schools and uh, with students representing each school. And then in January of 2014, we had a very fortuitous meeting with uh, Steve and Lucy. Uh, Steve and Lucy were excited enough to talk about uh, the work that they do with the Global Education Conference. And our student leaders at the time, uh, Isabel, Amanda, and Tyler, uh, we were talking about Steve and Lucy coming, and I said to them, well, what if you sort of pick their brain about how to plan a virtual conference, sort of how to plan this virtual meeting? So as a result of that, I don't think we could have asked for 
a more positive, enthusiastic, and uplifting response from Steve and Lucy. Uh, within about 10 minutes, their little idea for um, just a small virtual meeting with a small group of schools grew to uh, the concept of having this be a global conference uh, that was a, that had a student focus and and Steve and Lucy were great in that they offered their support and their advice and their insights and uh, in retrospect, you know, two years later, I don't think we would be where we are today without that advice and, uh, you know, enthusiasm and uh, cheerleading on their part. So that sort of got us to a point where we were thinking about we really have the talent and the skills to uh, host an international conference that would be student-led. So, uh, for for the conference, we had uh, our network was us, which is Marymount School. Uh, then we also had the University School of Milwaukee uh, and the Lafayette Middle School, and lastly the Lawrence Girls School in Melbourne, Australia. So the, so the mission for, for uh, our, our conference was to provide an international forum um, for the presentation, discussion, and sharing of educational uh, technology in schools and other academic settings. And by doing so, we hope to foster that an understanding of how students use technology in education and to engage students and peers and administrators in a conversation about technology. Uh, we also have access to teachers and administrators and understanding how students use technology both in and out of the classroom. And we sought to strengthen the relationship between students, teachers, and administrators about technology with their curriculum. And through those mission statements, uh, we found six strands that we thought would help, would help us lead students to uh, design their proposals and their uh, presentations. Uh, uh, so our first strand was, was design making innovation, uh, where we asked the students to like present on uh, using like 3D printers or laser cutters or the print design projects. We also talked for the second gen of technology in schools, uh, which was about using technology in classroom or in other academic settings. We came to the third gen, which is the educational technology tools. We talked to people who have been so focused on maybe SketchUp or iMovie or any other software to use on a computer. Uh, for the first gen, uh, um, we actually have to think about, about using uh, social, social media, media uh, and having to do anything settings. For example, we use it uh, at my mouth or, or, or Snapchat for MMT Live or like an Instagram or any other one. And for the first gen computership, we uh, we just asked students to use how they how they thought to build um, uh, businesses and companies um, in in their classrooms. And for technology and social justice, we saw um, we asked students to use any ideas they have in classrooms to help make their world a better place. So in the larger plan, we had biweekly conference calls with planning schools as well as Steve and Lucy. Each planning school volunteered to chair one committee, and each school also had keynote speakers. All the schools worked together to promote the conference while students submit proposals. We, the Marymount team, decide on the criteria for accepting presentations. And we always say the more the merrier, because we do accept more presentations than reject. So listed are the committees that each school volunteered to chair. For public relations and social media, we had a Twitter account run by the University School of Milwaukee. However, every school was responsible for promotional videos um, as well as promotion within their own school and, or district. And for presenter outreach, once proposals were accepted, we reached out to the individual and informed them of the next steps. Our Marymount team reviewed and decided on whether or not we accepted proposals. If a proposal wasn't accepted, we sent suggestions on how to improve the proposals. This year, we accepted 90% of the submitted proposals. Lastly, volunteer coordinators were responsible for making sure that each session had a presider and a moderator. 
So in order to send our conference, we had to raise $15,000, and each school had to contribute to this funding. Uh, and this money goes to supporting the infrastructure of the conference, such as the website, scheduling software, and this Blackboard software, but which we're using right now. The money also goes out to seeking partners to promote the conference, and the partners don't have to pay anything. They just help uh, uh, support the conference and get the word out. Uh, and each school had to find two partners to help with public relations. Uh, so this is our conference website, studenttechnologyconference.com, uh, which uh, you can find videos from the conference as well as other links about it and how it wants it to. All of our sessions from 2016 are recorded on here and you can find them. So this is our first year using GoFundMe. And last year we used a Kickstarter and surpassed our goal. We switched to GoFundMe as a crowdsource so that we wouldn't have to provide any re rewards. And also for a number of different reasons, we wanted to try out GoFundMe. But we didn't have the same success with GoFundMe as we did with Kickstarter. So next year we'll be returning to Kickstarter. Um, Mr. Walters, if you'd like to add anything onto that. It was a really interesting learning experience for us using uh, GoFundMe. And the reasons why it wasn't successful are probably immaterial. But one of the things we learned very quickly is how do you resolve having a huge hole in your budget? And uh, how do you find the money to make that up? So uh, we, we worked through it with the help of uh, some very generous donors at Marymount. And uh, next year when we return to Kickstarter, we will probably be uh, offering different rewards, uh, smaller rewards, uh, so that we can get more people uh, supporting the conference that way. Okay, so our 2016 conference was on January 30th, and it was from 9 in the morning to 9 in the evening. And the presentations were by students uh, from middle school all the way up to college for all to see. And we had four student keynotes, which included the Young Hackers, Coco Khalil, Aruna Prasad, and Victoria Constant. Um, and we had attendees from all over the world, including the United States, Australia, Ukraine, Cambodia, Malawi, Brazil, and England. The conference uh, took place on Blackboard Collaborate, which is the same software we're using right now. Um, and, and students could enter and present um, our conference from around the world and view it anywhere. Uh, the conference was also free, uh, so it's easy for anyone to attend. Um, while the conference was indeed uh, amazing, there were some issues that came up with it uh, during on the conference. In the morning, uh, in the morning, our first keynote speaker was actually half an hour late uh, to his keynote session. Um, so not everything goes smoothly. Is the the goal of 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 what I'm saying here that even though there's but we end up I learned how to problem sort problem sir solve. Um, while in that moment and was able to con continue to keep the conference going. But next year the conference will be even better. So um, next year the conference will be March 4th, 2017, and our call for proposals will be January 2017. Um, so if any of your students uh, would like any, any ideas to propose with you or uh, if you have an idea that you would like your students to be a part of this uh, and be a part of this conference, please uh, go to our website and submit our proposal. Um, and again, the, the conference will be from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, uh, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so, so once yes, again, here is the conference information. Our website is studenttechnologyconference.com. Here is the Twitter and hashtag for 2016 conference. Like guys listed are my Gabby, Eunice, and Mr. Walters email addresses if anyone has any further questions or would like to reach out. Um, thank you for attending our session. No one came, but um, uh, thank you for learning about the conference. Yeah.
Yes, yes, Mr. Walters. Walters. What yes, is Mr. Walters? Thank you, Mr. Walters. <laughs> Should we end it? Is this it?